Hello everyone. Welcome to Principles of Communication System lecture series. In this lecture video, we are going to discuss about some theme examples like Vivo Coder or our voice coder and digitalization of video and MPEG, the moving picture expert group. Let's consider voice coder block diagram. The Vivo Coder consists of two bandpass filter banks, envelope follower banks, amplifier and mixer bank. So Vivo Coder it consists of two inputs. One is the carrier and another one is the modulator. Carrier and modulator we apply to bandpass filters. So we know that bandpass filter it passes the particular range frequency. So carrier we connect apply to bandpass filter, bandpass filter of output again we apply it to amplifier and again here modulator is connected to bandpass filter and bandpass filter output is applied to amplifier through envelope follower and output of the amplifier is connected to mixer so across the mixer we received the vivo coded output a vivo coder works by imprising the constantly changing frequency spectrum of one signals onto the sound energy in another signal. Thus, a Vivo coder always has two separate inputs. The first one is modulator and another one is carrier. The speech and carrier inputs. The speech, also called as a modulator, the input receives not surprisingly a signal contains spoken word and paras. The carrier input is receives the signal that will be Vivo coded by having a frequency characteristic of the speech signal imprinted on it. Other sound sources can be used instead of a speech input, but spoken words are the most common sources. Note also that it's not necessary to sing into a vivo coder the pitch information in the output comes from the carrier signal so speaking into a normal tone works fine in vivo coders the carrier signal will be processed and then routed into a vivo coder output the speech signal will do its job and then be discorded the basic vivo coder contains a several elements it's shown in the figure the it has two banks of bandpass filter and a banks of envelope follower and a banks of amplifiers and mixers the main applications of the vivo coders are so vivo coder is used in digital trucking message messaging system we we use the vivo coder and musical and other artistic effects we use the vivo coders let's consider digitalization of video and mpeg in this theme example we consider how an analog video source may be efficiently converted to a digital representation for a digital transmission the modern video compression technique offers a way to represent a video on efficient and robust manner. On a simplistic level, the video can be represented by a three-dimensional, two-dimensional or spatial and represented a still image while a third dimension in term, in temporal, the representation of the image evolves with the time. In practice, the still image is actually represented further by three dimensional dimensions referred to on a luminous or brightness and two chrominance or color components similar to a three similar to the three red green blue rgb levels components of an analog video signals the mpeg 
standard takes on advantages of the i degree of spatial and temporal correlations that is expected in a video signals in order to reduce the number of bits required to a representation represent the signals let consider one simple block diagram for digitalization of video and mpeg the digitalization of video and mpeg is mainly consists of three section the first one is sampling and second section is quantization and third one is encoding so already we know that sampling sampling is converts the continuous events into discrete event and quantizer is converts the discrete events into approximation values and enco encoding it converts the input into suitable for transmission so here in this block diagram the video signal is applied to image sampling the output of the image samplings are p picture and i picture the output the p picture and i picture we apply to dct so discrete cosine transformer the output of this we apply to quantization and quantizer output again we connect it to encoding the output of the encoder is suitable for transmission the first step in sampling the video signals in constant to sampling a video signal which consists of a signal sample per unit time a sample of the video signal is an n into m matrix rows and column matrix of each picture elements or pels per unit time correspondingly to a complete still image the matrix sample is referred to as a video frame in fact three such matrix must be obtained one for each of the luminance and two for prominence components as with the voice signal the quality of the reconstructed signal is totally depends on the sample rate or frame rate however this sample quality must also be traded against the bandwidth required to transmit or store the signals that totally depends on required bandwidths the mpeg standard takes advantages of the fact that the human eyes is less sensitive to change in prominence than the luminance and uses a lower frame rate for the prominence signals typically frame rate for luminance signals may range from 15 to 60 per seconds and those for prominence signals may be one quarter of this values at the receiver the decoder uses the interpolations to construct the missing prominence samples and recreate the video signals the mpeg encoding algorithm in encodes the first frame in the video sequence in the intra frame coding mode or i pictures and each subsequent frame is coded using inter frame prediction or p pictures where data from the previously coded i r p frames are used for the predictions so in predictions we use the p picture and i pictures for the first frame i picture and the discrete cosine transformer dct is applied to each 8 into 8 blocks blocks of matrix the mathematically this is two dimensional transformer is defined by x of k1 into k2 is equal to summation it varies from m is equal to 0 to m1 minus 1 and again summation m2 is equal to 0 to m2 minus 1 it's equal to summation of x of m1 comma m2 into cos k1 pi divided by m1 into m1 plus 0.5 into cos k2 pi divided by m2 into m2 plus Point five. So this is a two-dimensional transformer. And this is the mathematical representation, and this is the eight cross eight matrix, where 
m1 and m2 are the coordinates in the spatial domain this is the m1 and this is a m2 so m1 and m2 are the coordinates in a spatial domain this is the space and k1 and k2 are the coordinates in the transformer domain for 8 cross 8 transformer m1 h equal to m2 it's equal to a2 so in 8 cross 8 matrix the m1 is equal to 8 and m2 is equal to 8 and k1 and k2 are range from 0 to 7 so for example this is k1 it varies from 0 to 7 this is k2 it varies from 0 to 7 the dct is closely related to discrete Fourier transformer the reason for applying the dct is that it's accurately identify the spatial correlations of the matrix within the 8 cross 8 block so this is the 8 cross 8 block similarly to how the fourier transformer identifies the frequency component of a signals that output of the two dimensional dct may look sometime like that shown in the figure due to a high spatial correlations only a small number of dct coefficient are significantly and typically those near to zero zero element so output of the dct again we apply to quantization process the content we know that quantization it converts the given input into a approximate format the output of the quantizer again we apply to encoder so encoder it converts the given input for transmission suitable for transmission these are some references thank you